GoGriffins.com, powered by Spine and Sport Physical Therapy. Train like the pros, my friends. This GSI Griffin Sports Update brought to you by Uncle D's Sports Bar and Grill. Uncle D's, it's where your friends are. I am a Griffin. I think the sky's the for us right now. I am a Griffin. Griffin football means everything to me. It's my life. It's what I'm dedicated to. You know, I'm here for the team, for my brothers. I am a Griffin. We are like a big family. Like, we're all just a bunch of brothers. I am a Griffin. We got more to play for. We got more to play for. You understand that? You can hit me. You can knock me down. But I will get back up. This is Griffin football. We will march on. This is Griffin football. This, this, this is Griffin football. Uh, you know, it was a pretty thorough class. Uh, we've um, uh, addressed, it, it was a big senior class, first of all, so there was, you know, there was some space financially, scholarship-wise, that we could do some things. Um, right now, we have uh, four O-line signees. We're hoping to have a fifth here before the day's out. Um, we have some D-line kids. Uh, it's pretty balanced throughout. There's some skilled kids on offense. There. Uh, some kids that we think are very good tacklers on the defensive side, uh, safety type kind of kids, and probably one that could be a corner. Um, right now we have three junior college signees. Uh, again, a fourth one. Uh, we're waiting, you know, with bated breath, waiting here any time now it could come. Um, and so overall, I think it was a good class. I think, I, I think uh, you know, the old adage of, you know, you, you hardly ever hear a football coach on the signing day say it was a bad class. That's, well, hardly ever, never. You're never ever going to hear that say, and that guy's not a very positive person if he says it. Um, I feel pretty strongly. I think our staff feel pretty strongly about what we've done. Uh, this has been a long season, really, when we get down to it. I mean, we were uh, calling recruits in, in late June uh, when we first could start doing it, uh, trying to set kids up for visits to Chiefs camp, unofficial visits to Chiefs camp. We were recruiting during Chiefs camp instead of watching practice. Uh, we had a very long and successful football season. On December, sec on December 2nd, right when we got done uh, in a heartbreaking loss in Minnesota, uh, we have a staff meeting and talk about what we're going to do recruiting-wise. Our staff was out immediately that week. Uh, we had kids on campus on the 8th, and it just never has stopped till right now, and I'm sure everybody wants to go take a long nap. Uh, but it is done, and, and I think that the thing that we've done here as a, as a staff, I think uh, certainly over the last decade or so, um, is I think we develop players really well. And so, uh, you know, I, I get asked a lot, do you get all the kids you want to get? Uh, no, I mean, we lose some kids, but, uh, but hopefully we got the right ones. And I think we did a quick look at uh, Coach Fenwick did it the other day. Uh, you know, the, people always talk about graduation rates. So we just kind of took a sheet and looked at the 2008 signing class, which was the seniors the next year, um, and, and just looked at the retention rates of, of our rivals, of the, the, what I'd consider the top schools in our league, four or five of them, and, and compared to ours. And I think of off our signing class, I'm not even sure what our number was that we had, but it was a huge, it was a huge class last year. So we were well over two thirds of it, you know, end up playing and being on that roster. And several of our rivals were less than 40% still on our roster. So a lot gets made of that that, that signing class, and it is very exciting. We get excited about it too, uh, but we also understand now it's it's up to them to find the field in a few years. And I do think in this class there are some guys that uh, will be all conference football players. And there'll be some that don't ever make it. And I think everybody's class will have that. So um, I, don't, I, I can open up to questions. I don't specifically, I don't necessarily single out any one kid, but questions? Well, let's start with quarterback, obviously. That, that's kind of obviously the marquee position you signed to. Talk about those two kids. Well, we, we historically have not had transfer quarterbacks. We've, had, we've been able to raise our own and, and, and build them. And, in some cases, uh, some of them had gigantic pedigrees, such as Drew, Drew uh, Newhart. Some were considered option quarterbacks that couldn't throw it, and they ended up first-team all-conference. And so we've done a good job of, of kind of picking kids out and, and developing them into football players. And uh, we feel like these two kids are uh, really good, um, Scott or Windmiller. And part of it is we can't decide, you know, really which one's the better, so we went with both of them, you know. And, uh, and both of them were aware of the other one, T.J. LaFavor and Scott or Windmiller. And, they, they were aware that we we're going after, and they, they, they were actually trained by the same uh, quarterback instructional guy um, that Drew Newhart did, and so they kind of knew about each other, and, uh, and I think they were able to compare offers, and, and there's all those kind of things, and they both knew or existed, and 
to tell you what kind of character they have and, and what competitive zeal they have. They both said, look, I'm going to be the guy. And uh, great, both of them, Skyler and, and TJ Bull, have great leadership skills. Uh, they're very similar built. They're not the thickest kids in the world. Um, they're both pretty thin. Uh, have good length to them, though. Both have very good arms, still great balls. Both very athletic. Uh, matter of fact, TJ LeFevre, we do a combine thing when on a visit. TJ LeFevre brought you up 9 11, which was better than any DB or receiver we had in. So uh, just when you meet them, eventually you're going to just realize they're future senator kind of kids, uh, those type of people. And so um, we're excited about both of them, and it's going to be fun to watch that competition. Is there a chance for, for one or both to? Not red shirt and be the backup next year? Uh, we will not kill a year on mop up duty. Um, if they're playing next year, it's because of worst case scenario. And so we don't want that to happen. Injury. That's worst case scenario. As a defensive line, were those, was that one of the main things you looked for in this class? Yeah, we, we always feel like we're a little, de I think everybody on our, I bet everybody on our level feels depleted there. I think when you go and you look out and you go start to recruit and you look at an old lineman and he said, boy, I like that kid. Well, then so does Toledo or so does Tulsa or, you know, and, that, and that's how it is. There's like a pecking order, you know, and I mean, our list, I'll be honest, our list, um, we had a kid committed to us that Mizzou offered last night, you know, and so it, 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 there is a fallout that happens. And, um, uh, you know, O-line wise, um, they're all great frame kids. They're all physical. Uh, they all like playing football. Um, and I, I really and I think most people would agree in this room, I think we have the best O-line coach there is in the country, and he'll develop those guys into really good football players. And so um, uh, John Carter was a kid that kind of surprised us a little bit from Jeff City. And I think that I'll talk about that in a second, but uh, he really came and it just really was athletic when he came here and very good wrestler. We have several wrestlers in the class. I mean, like four or five of them that are great wrestlers. Um, and he really impressed us, and we think he's one of those guys that's going to really come on fast. Uh, we had we we had some really good. If you, if you can see in the in the list, and I can't talk about two of the schools because they're, the stuff hadn't come in yet. Uh, but we really some big time schools. Uh, Jeff City, uh, Webb City. Uh, we Webb City. We've never got a kid from Webb City. That's right there in Pittsburgh's backyard. And and Logan Williams, a terrific athlete. Um, CBC. Um, you know um, Ozark. Two really good players from Ozark. Uh, one was a center who can deep snap. Another, uh, Cody Lindsay is a, uh, that's one of those wrestlers. I think, I don't know what his, I mean, you know, he's got, what is his record now? Aaron, 30 and 0 or something? 30 and 0, and I think almost all of them are pins. And he's got, you know, he's got that big, thick horse wrestler neck, and he looks the part. He's a really good football player and tailback slash outside backer. Uh, you know, there's two of the most prominent, we got Blue Spring South kid, and two other very prominent high schools in Kansas City uh, that are in the same location in Kansas City as Blue Spring South. Um, very close to them along the 291 corridor. Um, <laughs> we'll have commitments from them later on. And so uh, we're really pleased with that part of it. Um, you know, we've had um, just really championship programs. We've been doing that anyway for two or three years, and that leads to winning. Well, that's one thing I was going to ask you about today is obviously you've had great success recruiting, but as an MIAA championship, is 12 and 2, trip to the national quarterfinals, does that help when you're trying to, to seal the deal? Sure, it helps. I mean, everything, everything involved helps. I mean, whatever we can show them, great dorms, uh, atmosphere to basketball game, this facility, uh, winning, our, our winning personalities, um, whatever we can show to convince a kid to come, it helps. Uh, the others um, aren't chopped liver, though. I mean, those other people do a great job recruiting, too. Those other schools get out there and compete, and, and they have their own traditions. And we didn't get everybody we wanted, that's for sure. And, um, but everything helped. Everything piled in and helped. What about running back? Because you lost a great one in Michael Hill. Uh, what about these guys you signed here? What, what is the potential? We feel great about what's coming back, first of all, so we don't have to go out and get a transfer. I think Dalton Kreisa is, is as solid as it gets. He returns from an ACL surgery. Obviously, we saw uh, Raphael Spencer's talent level. We still got to keep some, taking some steps. Uh, but he's, he will still be that, uh, the Bob least, he's going to be that novelty, uh, sh big strike guy. We want him to develop into a more consistent guy. And then Dom Thomas having a great spring and feel really good about those kids. Um, but we, these kids we signed um, are, are going to be good players. Um, the, the guy that uh, Kendall Short was a kid that was actually a Division I uh, commitment uh, from the spring. And then they dropped him in September where we were very fortunate to get him. Um, I talked to a friend of mine that's a 1AA coach, and he found out we were getting him. He was very frustrated that he kind of dropped the ball, didn't recruit him. Um, Kendall Short's athletic enough and size enough that he could play other spots too. He's more of a slasher and a pounder. The other two guys aren't real big. 
uh, Trey Irvin and uh, Zach Parmenter. Uh, Zach's from Smithville. Good, solid workhorse kind of kid. And, and Trey Irvin's a kid that could play about anywhere. He could be a slot receiver or even a corner. We do have three transfers. I'm surprised it hadn't been asked yet. I mean, but uh, yeah, but uh, uh, one of them created quite a bit of a celebration in there. I don't even know how to say his first name. Uh, Jaquay, I think. Polite. Um, we call him JP. Um, JP spent about 24 hours here before he realized I was the head coach. Uh, but he's, he's just a great kid. He's an awesome dude and uh, from South Carolina. Um, we actually beat a, a pretty good school to get him. Big, strong, athletic, you know, physical. He's got it all. And uh, we hope to have him come in and start next year. He'll compete definitely for sure. Um, John Oglesby is a Ben Peaster clone uh, in a lot of ways. Um, he's a similar size. Uh, very long-armed, uh, could gain weight and be an inside guy uh, from a great school, Bakersfield. Uh, was a Division One signee out of high school, I believe Fresno State's where he signed originally. Um, he, he's, his shoulders are put together a little better right now than Ben Peasters are. I think he's got at least some labrum that are together. Uh, we're anticipating him coming in and being a major factor off the bat. Uh, then Kalen Booker is a kid we signed last summer from LA Valley, could be a safety or corner, very good athlete that just kind of missed on some things to get here and then now he's re-signing coming back and, and we're excited to have him in, in, in the fold. So. Did some of the one. Win, all right, just winning those, you know, attaining that honor, those honors last year. I mean, do you think that kind of translated in terms of getting some bigger size linemen? O-linemen are hard. I don't know if it helped or not. O-linemen are difficult to recruit. It is the most hardest position to recruit there is. It, there's a trickle down of you, you got to be smart and, and just project quite a bit of times. I mean, the kids that you look at that has all the, the measurable size and athleticism and physicality and all that, they're looking for them at the higher level. So it's very difficult. But I think it helps to have a guy like Throck and, and, you know, and just be able to develop people. And, you know, I mean, we've got, we're not a lot, a lot, a lot uh, you know, like a lot of folks, we have kids ready to go a lot of times. And, and I, I, you know, one of them sitting in a room here that has been sitting here for two years where, you know, Travis Anderson and, and Leonard Wester are kids that have been biding their time. They're ready to step up and do it. So, but I, I think that these kids that we signed this time, and they're going to be right in there and they're going to develop. And, and within two to three years, Todd Throckmorton's going to make them players. I don't know if I answered your question or not. I went off on a different tangent, I think. So, you know, it, I don't know. I mean, I think that obviously success makes it easier to get kids. Yes, yes, we did, and uh, there is one still we're counting on coming through today um, that uh, we hope can come in and, and uh, compete and, and provide competition. We need depth. Period. We do, we're we're going to go into spring ball with uh, eight kids, so we, you know the the spring game as you've been seeing here the last couple of springs, as you know it, it will not happen that way. 